Well, welcome to Jackknife TV. If you've been watching the channel and you're subscribed and everything, you've uh, seen that things have changed a lot. I went from driving a fairly low payment, cheap, older truck, non emissions, to top of the line, brand new, you know, $4,000 a month truck payment. So we are going to see how this goes. Um, this is going to be the first maiden voyage. Uh, you know, next is who knows what's next. Uh, hopefully a lot of money making. So enjoy the intro and uh, yeah, hopefully I'll shoot you some good uh, B-roll footage and give you guys, you know, what you want to see.
easy as that. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna leave it in there, but I'm gonna probably edit out the problems I had sliding my fifth wheel. Uh, I might leave it in there, I don't know. We'll see how the editing goes. So if you see it, you see it. Before all the you know, keyboard warriors or YouTube trucking collar, uh, trucking college professors or whatnot uh, get on me about not pre-tripping. I already walked around the trailer before and pre-tripped it. And then when I hooked up to it, right now before you've seen the uh, start filming here, I checked the lights and everything. Like I said, Tyson pretty much keeps, I would say they're only maybe five to 10 year old trailers at that. And there's always, always work being done on them, especially over at the Pottsville facility. So yeah, there's uh, you know very little that you actually have to dig into to uh, make sure the trailer is safe because it's already been done for you. That's called uh, keeping a safe and efficient fleet. Uh, so right now I'm just getting ready to head out of here. I'm probably going to get the uh, trailer washed out. It looks pretty clean. There's no, you know, there's no pieces of wood in it or anything, but. Where I'm at right now, everything stinks. So I'm just assuming that trailer stinks. It's hard to tell when you open a door up. Uh, other than that, like I said, it's gonna be the first maiden voyage. Empty trailer on the girl. Uh, so far, it doesn't look like I'm gonna have any problems, except for a little bit of a problem there sliding the fifth wheel. I uh, don't know what that was all about. Uh, I'm hoping it has nothing to do with the power divider or whatnot. I did flip that around too, just in case. But I think it's just because the trailer was on like a, right there is like a mound for some reason where they dropped the trailers at. So I, you know, I even pulled the trailer out. I wasn't gonna try to get in between there, and squeak, you know, get all dirty and squeeze my butt in between those two trailers to try to try to put it down. So just a little dirt, didn't hurt the landing gear at all. You know, kick the dirt off and the rocks, and keep on going. So down the road we go.
So like I said, uh, I don't know if you saw me walking around in that uh, the B-roll footage over there. I cannot get the tandems to release no matter what. Uh, and I don't have a hammer or anything with me because, well, I just got in this truck today. I don't got all my tools or anything. Uh, I've tried a rock. I've tried to hit them in. It, they just, the pins aren't releasing. They're either rusted solid or the valve's not releasing. Uh, you know, I can hear it release, I, but I don't, the pins just, they barely go in and then they latch maybe with like a half inch sticking out. So even backing it up against the curb back here, you know, pretty good. It's it's not the pins, they, they don't care. They ain't letting go no matter what. So uh, not only that, the tire has a big chunk out of it. So uh, I'm gonna drive this thing down to Little Rock about 40 minutes away and we're gonna have a new tire put on it and uh, hopefully the pins smashed in or whatever they're gonna do to them, I don't know. Uh, I know when I drop it off, I don't think I'm gonna slide the trailer back. I'm just gonna let it the way it is, so. We'll see where this goes. So I'm gonna pull out of here and it's gonna be a pain in the butt making this turn here with the tandems all the way back. I will tell you that. Um, we're gonna pull out of here and uh, I guess uh, you'll see me sitting around at uh, Love's there, which hopefully I'll get paid for all this. I don't know. So, see you there. Yes, we are getting like nine and a half miles fully loaded. Nine and a half miles fully loaded. We're just driving along. Hopefully, uh, it doesn't take that long to get a tire put on over here at Love's. And, you know, we can get back up on the road real quick. And I guess the first stop is I'm gonna head over to Virginia, down to where my truck's still parked, get some stuff out of it. And uh, we'll, we're gonna see, we're gonna see what the, uh, the mileage is the rest of this trip. I'm well, we're over here at Speedco, I guess, uh, North west of Little Rock. So I can't have you in the truck. Can't have me in the truck here? Yeah. Alright. Virginia, so I'm gonna walk around here and slip the camera around. We're gonna see what we got going on. There she be. We're gonna get all our stuff out of there. Here it sounds pretty bad. Still got some oil pressure though. Actually, more than she usually does idling. So I'm gonna just start pulling everything out here and. Uh, yeah, and then eventually, hopefully, get this thing and get it the hell out of here sometime this week or next week. So, uh, that's just, I'm just gonna probably add this into the little trip video I got going on. So, I'll probably just shoot this up there real quick. Um, just to update, I had to put something out because I gotta edit all the, all the video and everything I got. So, I guess the batteries didn't get stolen. None of the tires got stolen. So, I guess that's good. So I'll update everybody here right, well, in a little bit. I apologize, I didn't get no B-roll of me dropping the trailer and everything. I'm a little bit in a hurry. Plus the yard, two yard guys are flying in and out of here real quick. I guess they were grabbing trailers back here so I didn't want to get in anybody's way. So I just did about 1600 miles in this next gen uh, T680. And I have to say, out of every truck I've ever drawn, uh, this is probably the best. Uh, now, of course, a brand new truck's going to be nice. It's going to be quiet. It's going to ride good. Um, it's okay for a powerhouse. I wouldn't say this thing's going to beat no 3406s or no, uh, you know, red top Cummins or anything like that. 
but for what it is, it moves pretty good, uh, especially considering it's an automatic. I have to say that whoever designed and, and programmed this automatic, it's phenomenal. Um, it's just about as good as I would say the iShift is. It just does its thing and goes. Even even when turning, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. I'm sure this isn't set up uh, with company parameters per se, but turning through like you know a left on a right or pulling out it just it just shifts and goes and it, it'll rev you know if you have your foot down on the floor it'll rev up and, and take off um you know so i have no complaints uh it it did everything i could ask and if i needed to do more i just hit this little button here on the side it puts it in manual mode i push it down and it stays in ninth gear or tenth gear or whatever i need to do to pass and it she'll rev all the way up past 2000 rpm if you want her to why i'm not doing that because she's still pretty new but she will you know she will do it um but mostly anyway most of the torque uh, on these newer engines you know they're a lot lower you're probably talking about like 13 to 1500 um, you know might get some horsepower up there around 1800 rpm or something but other than that you know the truck drives beautifully and the fuel mileage the fuel mileage i think i got like 30 i already gave the paper and uh, i think i got like 38 in the box or did have 38 in the box and she did double digits fuel mileage had to i mean i couldn't calculate it all the way out uh because i ended up getting fuel in virginia uh, i didn't want to get fuel in pennsylvania just because uh well, it's expensive but you know i still had over a quarter tank of fuel in this thing and I was at like six uh, let's see when I got fuel it was like 1450 maybe 1500 on the mileage and the whole time it's been telling me I've been getting uh, well when I was coming through Arkansas and Tennessee and everything I said I was getting like if you saw a picture there that I posted my community page like 11.8 11 11.9 to a gallon so, you know, as soon as I got to Virginia, it dropped down to about 9, 9, 8, 10, 10, 2, somewhere around there. But I would imagine I probably could have got 2,000 miles out of the fuel tanks in this thing if I had ran it all the way out. Uh, so there you go. Uh, double digit fuel mileage. And, you know, there were times, you know, pulling out and passing or getting up a hill. I was, you know, I was downshifting and stuff. So, but for the most part, I stayed... I guess when I was going through Arkansas and stuff, I was doing about 68, maybe 70. And then when I hit, you know, like lower, like Tennessee, you know, when the speed started dropping down, I did about 65 to 62 the whole time. So, uh, you know, when I got up here on, let's see, 81, where it opens up uh, after like uh, Harrisburg and stuff, I was doing 70. But, you know, the rest of the way though, I took it easy. And, and the fuel economy, it, it literally wiped the floor with my international. So, I, you know, I'm basically making a truck payment right there with fuel, the fuel savings. The DEF, the last truck I drove that had DEF, it had a smaller tank, maybe like a 15 gallon or 10 gallon or something. I know it was a smaller tank. But man, that thing would go through DEF like no tomorrow. I would say about every 800 miles, I had to fill the tank up or 600 miles somewhere out there. It, it just, it was constant. It just, you could watch the DEF gauge go down while you were driving around and stuff. This, I started out with three quarters of a tank of DEF. And by the time I got up to Virginia and stuff, like I said, about 1400 miles, I still had over half a tank. You know, it barely, barely moved I could probably easily get 4,000 miles probably out of a tank of DEF maybe more so that's uh, that's acceptable I'm, I'm fine with that I'm not gonna be blowing money on DEF really either so I, I have everything I have good to say about this truck it's quiet it turns well it maneuvers well um, the dash layout once you get used to it and you set it up right it's great i haven't had no problems with dash uh, i wish the speakers yeah, the speakers could be a little bit better they do not like they do not like being loud they do not like bass uh 
There's very few though, very few semi trucks I've gotten in that have actual decent speakers in them. Um, that's really it guys. Uh, if you have $200,000 laying around and you want to buy a truck, I would say about the only, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to tell it. Everyone has a preference. Uh, like I do, I do like the fully loaded freight liners. You know, there's probably a difference between quality with the freight liner and this Kenworth. But I do like the fully loaded freight liners, the one with the Murphy bed and the uh, breakfast nook underneath of it and stuff. That that would be great. And one you could fit the like a really big ass full size fridge in it, like uh, one of those uh, like six cubic inch whatever they are fridges or cubic feet fridges. That that would be that would be great. All all you could ask for next is a you know shower and bathroom. You know, um, but for the layout seat swivels around you have a place to sit like a normal human being you have a tv mount um the mattress is extremely firm now i have sciatica so we're well dead it hasn't flared up knock on i don't know there's wood here maybe somewhere knock on something but the mattress is really stiff when you get it so far i've slept in it a few nights and it's gotten softer but I'm, I'm pretty sure there's some people that would take that mattress and chuck it right out the window. Uh, the I got it came with mats. T6 it says T680 floor mats. I don't know if they're the old style because the driver's side sort of fits, but there's a I don't know there's a rail it, you know the seat connects to and it overlaps the floor mats so the floor mat wants to like turn and not sit right a little bit. Uh, I'll take care of that with like a knife, but. Uh, I can't. Have, I don't have anything bad to say about this truck. We'll see if I start breaking down all the time. Um, if, if I had a large company and I wanted to, you know, bring drivers over or, or at least make them comfortable, right here, I'll just buy a fleet of these, same color, either that or blue, like that uh, neon blue uh, or whatever, or cobalt blue or whatever it is. And uh, I would call it a day. I would get them automatics too because, tell you what, unless you drove a W900 with a 13 or an 18 speed, or you drove like a 379P with a 3406 B in it, and it was all wound up, and you had, like I said, it, this probably drives better than 60% of the trucks on the road, maybe 70%. I mean that for speed and stuff. Uh, I haven't hauled nothing heavy with it. Like I said, it's only like 38k. But you know, it's not. It's it's made to be a a, a road queen. She's not hauling uh, Euclids and stuff up the side of a mining mountain or anything like that. Uh, would I like all the truck with all the chrome and stuff on it and the 18 speed or a 13 speed? Hell yeah, I would fucking love it. I would give me a 379 Pete with a uh, extended sleeper. I forget what they call them. Uh, you know, I'm not up on my old school trucking. But with the extended sleeper and the, you know, like a 13 speed with, with a souped up 3406B. Shit, all, all day long. Especially if, if you gave me the paying freight for it. I will haul oversize. I'll do whatever. Just pay me what I need for to run that truck and I'll be happy showing it off. Going down coming around down the corner down the hill going burr, burr, you know freaking uh but other than i'm you know i'm i'm going off on another topic but uh she's making me money she's nice she's quiet i don't know i'm just trying to explain because i know there's guys that are going to be like oh it's a shitty automatic it's a shitty plastic truck you know, if you went out and bought a brand new Dodge Ram pickup truck, maybe not the you know the high end uh, one. What's the high end one? Um, the, the well, like yeah, all about this Ford, like a King Ranch. This ain't no King Ranch, but it's a it's a at least like a uh, XLT. I forget how Ford does it, but it's pleasantly packaged, and it's like driving a new car. It's quiet. It rides nice. 
there, I don't have no fatigue. I'm not, you know, fighting anything. Um, and at night, like right now, the reefer's running. You probably don't even hear it, to be honest with you. Uh, it's, it's, ex well, the reefer's pretty quiet anyway here. I think they're carriers. But um, it's insulated. It's quiet. You know, I can't, I can't ask for any more. So that's my, my little review. Uh, you know, eventually I'll probably start making videos of me, you know, doing stuff and playing with the radio and making, you know, making dinner or whatnot and showing you where I stuck everything. But that's just my little 1500 mile review. Uh, the biggest thing is the fuel mileage. It's putting money back in my pocket. Uh, if it can run an easily another 1500 miles and I, let's see, I put 500, this is without the discount. I put $575 in down there in, uh, uh, Texas. So that $575 lasted me all the way up to the Virginia, Maryland line. And then I put, I think $664 in and then like another $30 of death. Um, now with the discounts, that probably brings that six something down to the five you know, high 500 range, and the 575 probably drops down in the five, high 480, 490 range, because uh, the discounts were, are phenomenal with this company. So, there you go. I can run 3,000 miles for under a thousand dollars, maybe 1,200 dollars. Uh, I I couldn't do that with the other truck. The other truck I probably would have spent even with the lower rates right now, I probably would have easily eaten, you know, I would have filled it up to 300 gallons and I probably would have easily eaten almost 200 gallons already just by coming up here. So I don't know, but that's, uh, that's it. I'm going to get out of here. I, you know, like I said, I just wanted to at least the why, why I was fresh while I was still here in the truck, throw that out there and make the review. And that's that's going to be the end of this video. The next you're probably going to watch some of the B-roll uh, in front of it. Um, I'll probably throw in the clip that I put up earlier, you know, because technically it's part of this trip of me going to get my stuff out of the old the old uh, international. And uh, that's it. So, hey, if you like these videos, if you want to learn more about about this truck, uh, you know, the next gen uh, T680. If you want to know how I'm how I'm gonna to manage to do it and what I'm making, you know, making here or, or at least somewhat and, and about this company, which I'm pretty sure they're gonna go on a hiring freeze soon because you know just they've had an outpour of people uh, call lately. Uh, you know, comment down below. Uh, I also have an email. I'll try to throw an email up in there. And uh, please like, subscribe. I'm trying to build this channel into something. And I'm going to try to get more professional with these videos and with how I present myself. Uh, like even right now, I mean, I need I need a haircut, go see the barber, get a get a shave, and uh, you know, a nice fade going on. And you know, I would I would like to like build this into something that it's more educational, more entertaining for everyone. So. All right, I'm going to leave here now. Uh, you all have a good night, and uh, see you.